to this tutorial for Shortcuts Auto version 5. That's a, I rewrote the bot, so this is a, a new tutorial to walk us through how the bot works and how everything works. So when you open up the bot right now today, you'll see an option for the sniping bot, which is the first the bot's implemented. Um, it has some configuration stuff that we'll walk through later. It also has an event log, which is just a log of actions the bot has taken. It has the statistics section. It just has general uh, stats about uh, your bot's runs over time. And then it has just a section for support. You can link to the Discord or to send me an email. All right, well, let's get started looking at the actual settings for the sniping bot. Uh, so the sniping bot works a little differently than you may be used to uh, if you've used the bot before. Um, I try to simplify it as best I can. So now you can think about it this way. When you start the bot, if you have a sniping filter, it'll apply the filter. That bot will run for a specified amount of time or until it hits a stopping condition, which we'll go over in a little bit. You can specify how much time is spent between each search. You can specify how the bot uses different values in the transfer market page to get fresher results. Go over that. You can choose how you want uh, the bot to select the result in a couple of options. You can specify what happens when the bot wins a card. You can give it a default action. And then you can also set up a uh, list of rules. There'll probably be a separate tutorial for that. And then as well, this is uh, slightly different from the past where we had on and off intervals. Um, this time around, the bot will just work and work, but it will take periodic breaks. And the way we specify breaks is you choose first a variable amount of duration, and then you choose a variable amount of frequency, and it goes by number of searches. So for example, here, when the bot starts, I may decide that after 72 searches, it'll take a 54 second break, and then it'll keep continuing. And then it'll choose a random value each time. There's still the option to do random task before break to simulate uh, you know, doing something else rather than just sniping. And then there's a set of the stop conditions. So yeah, so that's it. So that's it at a, a high glance. Now we'll kind of go through a specific example and we'll kind of walk through how, the, how it's set up right now. So let's go ahead and first the sniping filter. This is just a nice handy handy way to load a sniping filter uh, for configuration you're gonna run often. So for me, I'll snipe shadow cards often. So I have my filter set up behind me. You can see it back here. I click import, it tells me okay, great. So it has now what my filter is, what's associated with this configuration, and then also um, exposes like the max bin value of the sniping filter so you can adjust it. You can even adjust it from here and uh, apply it in the web app and it'll do all that for you. It'll, it'll let me know if it succeeded or failed. So let's put that back to the way it was. Uh, you do need to remember to save the setting, so we'll save that to import the sniping filter. We'll collapse that away. Uh, next we can choose the, the running duration of the bot. You can choose really any time. 15-30 minutes is fine, sure. Uh, time between searches, this is uh, familiar if you've used the bot before. Uh, but basically this is the amount of time between before the next search happens. So I mean, the bot may do a search, it may decide that there's gonna be 2,500 milliseconds before the search button is pressed again. So basically after they get the bot gets results, after it tries to do uh, a buy, it'll basically just calculate, have I spent that 2,500 milliseconds doing actual work? If I haven't, let me just fill a time with waiting before we click the button again. This is just so we don't do too many searches too quickly and get flat in the spot. Um, values differ here. Um, really, this is just, this is kind of quick, but anything, you know, Try it out, see what works for you. For search result freshness, uh, if you use the bot before, this is kind of similar to re reset price in the past. Uh, basically, the way the bot works is uh, you, you set up the filter, set up a max bin, and then essentially the bot will use the min bin price of the filter, increment it, do a search, go back, increment it, do a search to keep the results fresh. Now, in the configuration, you have to set the maximum min buy now price. So in this example, I have 3,000 here. So basically, the bot will do the increment search, increment search up until 3,000 here, and then they'll reset back to zero which that should be plenty of buffer time to get fresh results all the time, so that works for me. So that's how that works. There's also the max buy now price, uh, right here, the max max buy now price actually. Um, and essentially, if this value is higher than the value in the filter, this will be also incremented to uh, get fresh results. This is particularly help helpful for uh, lower value cards. For example, if you're trying to snipe cards that are worth a thousand coins, um, there's not a lot of room to play with here to get fresh results. So you can, if you can do it, you could do 900 and then do a max buy now with like 1200 and then that'll add some variety of the, the search matrix and get you fresher results. So that's how that search result freshness works. Result selection is pretty straightforward. Um, basically the bot will uh, use whatever criteria you select uh, when trying to select a search result if there are more than one. So top to bottom is just the default. Uh, bottom to top may be the, the newest listed, cheapest will be the, the cheapest bin, and then highest rated is for player cards where the rating matters there. So uh, cheapest wins for me. And then in this version of the bot, uh, for now, um, well, I won't, well, I won't, well uh, uh, it won't do multiple, uh, multiple buys in a row, but it will do multiple buy attempts. So 
if there are three results and the bot misses on the first one, it will try to select the next uh, the next best card and try to do another buy to potentially get a deal where you may miss out. In the last version of the bot, it only tried once, so um, that's a little improvement and hopefully something we can improve improve even more to try to actually do multiple buys, it's multiple successful buys going forward. Uh, next, the follow-up actions. Uh, basically here, uh, this is what happens after the card, after the bot wins a card. Um, by default, you could select an action, you can select to do nothing, so let's go into your design list. You can list it and specify values here. Do make sure that the values you select are legi legitimate values for the card. The bot doesn't check it for you. Uh, you can send it to the transfer list or you can send it to the club. Um, so that's what will happen whenever the bot wins a card. Now, if you want to be a little fancier with it, you could use rules. Um, what that looks like is a little nicer UI on the newer version of the app. But uh, basically, there's a set of conditions here, and if the result matches all of the conditions, it will do the action uh, for the rule instead of the default action. Um, so for example, if uh, I was searching for uh, you know, Christian Pulisic, Captain America, uh, and I had a Pulisic uh, to match the Pulisic, and then it, if he had a Hunter card on him, instead of listing for 1,000, maybe I would list him for uh, 2,000 instead. So I could add the rule there. Um, the UI now does a does it, does it tries to do some work to kind of tell you what your conditions were and kind of what the rule was. So you, know, you could just edit it and save it. Uh, you can delete it, and then if you have more than one rule, you could order them, and uh, the rules are checked in the order they appear. Uh, and basically, if the card the bot one doesn't match anything, it will just do the default action. So that's kind of how that works. And um, I may do a more in-depth tutorial about the rules um, so you look out for that. But that's how it works. It's, I think it's pretty straightforward. Uh, breaks, like I said before, uh, you know, obviously you don't want to run the bot. Uh, just always sniping, always sniping, always sniping. In the past, uh, we achieved this by picking a random time the bot would work for, and the random time it would take a break for. Um, this version, uh, just because the way I architected it, I chose to do it this way, where um, you know you choose the max, you, know, you choose the duration you want the bot to run, and then basically every x number of searches the bot will rest for n number of seconds, minutes, or hours, even if you wanted to. Uh, so really play with it and see how it works. Um, it doesn't you know really necessarily do much, I guess, but it does simulate a little bit of uh, human-like behavior. So. Even short breaks, short frequent breaks might look a little more human-like, so you know your mileage may vary. Try it out and let me know how it goes. Uh, there's also the option of doing a random task uh, before the break starts. So at the time the bot determines it needs to take a break, um, if you have this option selected, um, it'll do random tasks like checking out the team of the week or exploring leaderboards in the web app just to you know explore a different page. And it'll find its way back to the transfer market page and reset up your filter and all that good stuff. So um, just another kind of anti-bot measure we added last year. Uh, and then I think the last the last section the last section is the stop conditions. Um, basically, there's a bunch of different asks people have had uh, since I created the bot the first time with all these different thresholds. Uh, basically, it's whatever options you want. They're pretty straightforward. So, like, if the bot buys five cards, stop the bot. If the card sees, if the bot sees, uh, you know, a hundred cards, stop the bot. Um, adding zero for any of these just ignores it essentially. Uh, you could limit the number of searches the bot does. You could limit it now. Uh, the searches about the results. It's a new feature. Uh, you can also do search result limit um, in a single search. Um, this kind of replaces, it used to be like a second page block, now you can actually specify the number of results. So for me, if I see, if the bot sees four results uh, on one search, then um, it would uh, stop the bot, it, you know, maybe the card's values dropped, etc. Um, and then there's also minimum coin balance. You can select your own value here, uh, but also the bot now is smart enough to use your max bin value of your filter. Um, so basically for me, if my coin balance drops below 4,800, the bot would stop in this case. So. Um, that's kind of the settings. Um, so we have those settings. Let me make sure I saved it. Okay, it did. So I'm gonna go ahead and start this. You can do right from the pop-up. You can see the bot will apply the filter. Even though it's already applied, it'll do it again. And then I'll just keep going. Um, you can check the event log. Um, you can check, only show the most recent run, which is I find the most valuable. Um, it logs a certain amount of things. We could always add more. So if you have requests, please let me know. But you know, it's staying right now. We'll run this configuration for this length of time. And then it says how many uh, searches it'll take for it to be a break. You can also see the statistics, uh, live updating um, as the bot runs. Um, so configurations are all well and good. Um, there's also a way to save them. Um, so for example, um, I have a couple of saved right now. Um, I can actually go ahead and just like load these while the bot's running because all the settings are fetched um, ahead of time. So um, I will get a you know, confirmation saying, do I want to load it? Uh, um, it'll overload the active settings. So I'll go ahead and do that. And if I go back to the active configuration, um, you'll see the filter now as a pool stick one. Um, you know, my, my bot's running for 22 minutes, so you know, this value is different. So basically, I loaded a different configuration. I go back and load my shadow one, and you can see the filter come back, for example. And this is actually an old version that I didn't save. So, um, yeah, and you can overwrite them, you can load them, delete them, and all that good stuff for, for saving. Um, and then, last but not least, for the sniping bot specifically, uh, there's notifications. I try to simplify this a little bit in the new version of the bot. You know, you still have your, you have now it's your single Discord ID and a uh, single webhook, and basically, there are a number of events right now that I'm tracking to log. 
Um, and right now, you, know, you can hover over these, it does log to Discord, um, and then you can do log to Discord and at mention. Um, that way, you can you know get an extra notification. And this is uh, to play a sound. Um, so yeah, so you could select these, and these get this auto uh, save. There's no need, there's no save button on this page. It just auto updates right away. So those are, those are the notification system, uh, notification settings. So I think that's about it. Uh, I was hoping to see a single card during this tutorial, but I didn't quite see it, so I'll have to record another demo video. Uh, but yeah, that is a walkthrough of the new setting, so uh, please give it a try uh, and all that. Uh, let me know what you think. So you can see it's taking a, taking a break. I should go ahead and just stop it. You can see the flip to off, and you can check the lock. So yeah, thanks for listening, and uh, good luck.